morning guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to the vlog today you're gonna to see day five of the major league fishing at Lake Okeechobee on what is a beautiful morning here in Central Florida I'm going fishing I'm gonna edit go fishing and really you're gonna see some interviews now I brought Les with me the world's oldest intern and I appreciate Les coming down but Les got to find out the exact hardships I had this week down there and it's not his fault uh they just major league fishing has a new way of doing things and these guys just kind of run off so he, with two people i felt like i would be able to get more stuff done so i thank Les for coming out before that if you guys want one of those free buffs you hear that i thought i heard a cow if you want one of those free buffs go to southern fin apparel and you can uh, get one for free all you gotta do is pay for shipping and handling so do that get one of those I'll put a link in the description below but you're gonna see some great interviews from Fletcher Shryrock and Jacob Wheeler and Jacob Prosnick a whole bunch of guys that made the top 10 and some other guys that are just we're big fans of so uh, stay tuned like subscribe comment be part of the fish and Florida radio family too so do us a favor and click that button those buttons and Thanks for watching. Seriously, thanks for watching. I, I don't think people, we can say thank you enough, but thank you for watching. Um, if you don't know, I have some, some lures to give away. And those people who commented on the lures in the community tab, I need some addresses. So let's do this. Without further ado, roll those interviews. And thanks again for watching, guys. Jacob Brosnick, how are you, sir? I'm good. Congratulations. Yeah, going into uh, Championship Sunday. You know, you, if you don't make it to Championship Sunday, you don't have a chance of winning. So, you know, that's that was the whole deal. And, um, you know, things are looking up. A lot of fish are moving in, and uh, it could turn out to be one of those days. The weather's getting better. You just said their fish are moving in. Are you seeing more pre-spawn, or are they spawned out? Yeah, no, they're pre-spawn. They're up there, paired up, rubbing around. I mean, I saw probably 15 or 20 pairs today that are just rubbing, you know. Some of them are big, some of them are not, you know, but that's just typical Florida, you know, Florida fishing. Run across the right ones, but, you know, for, for some reason right now, they want something kind of moving, you know. So tomorrow, probably going to be swimming a worm all day long and uh, just, you know, see what happens. That's what the key bait has been for you, a, a yeah, worm, that, like a, how are you, how are you rigging it? How are you throwing just, it? Just, just, it's just a swimming worm, you know, just throw it out there and wind it in. Yeah, like a speed worm yeah, almost. Yeah, kind of like a speed worm, yep. And, uh, you know, and then just pit, kind of pitching the beds and stuff has, has been a really, really, uh, really good deal. But, you know, tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow's a different day and uh, there'll be 10 of us out there and somebody's gonna walk away with 100 grand. You feel, you feel confident going in tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I always feel confident, you know, but it's, uh, it's typical typical fishing, you know, just go out there and catch as many as you can. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, you do all that stuff? Yep, Instagram, Facebook, yep, jagerprosnick.com uh, on my uh, Facebook, or just jagerprosnick on Instagram. Awesome, thank you, dude. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, bud. Thank you, dude. Fishing Florida Radio, tell us how your day went today. Uh, other than fighting these gnats off right now, uh, it was a great day. You know, the these fish are so controlled by you guys' weather and we had some bad weather starting the event and it showed you know uh, a lot of guys struggled some guys didn't even catch a scoreable two pound bass in two days so that just goes to show you how much that these fish are really controlled by the weather but uh, we've had this warming trend the last couple days and the fish have set back up and they're coming again they're setting up on beds um, and they're post spawn there's still some spawning so it's a great time to be in Florida. It's a great time for us to have this event. And I really think even though the weather's gonna turn a little bit for us tomorrow and get a little worse, I think you're gonna see some mega weights come tomorrow. We're gonna catch a lot of fish, probably see some big fish caught. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting back out there again and getting to it. We're catching a lot of fish swimming a worm. We're doing we're catching a lot of fish swimming a jig, flipping, uh, throwing a wacky worm, just a little bit of everything. We're mixing it up when we get in certain areas, when water gets slick and when water gets, you know, uh, ripples on it and when wind pushes in. Uh, we're just chasing that clean water, trying to keep ahead of the fish and seeing if we can't find enough of them to take that big red trophy home back to Texas. Did you have any trouble with the wind today? I did not have much trouble with the wind today. Um, I'm just I'm fishing a really good area. It's protected from all sides, it seems like. Um, so it does move the water around where I'm at. So it seems to be firing different sets of fish up, if that makes sense, because the clean water will move into a new area. And then those fish that are in that area seem to just pull out and start feeding. And, and that's, uh, that's been pretty key to the success this week. Great. Thank you so much, Jeff. Have a great day tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. Thank you for having us. Right. Bye now. Hey. Andy Montgomery, how are you today? 
good. Um, had a good week here, so I'm gonna end up 18th place. Um, fish today was the best day fishing wise, and basically all week I just flipped a big jig with a Strike King Magnum Rage bug on the back and, and flipped reeds, uh, bull rushes, flat reeds, mainly bull rushes. I got a mouthful of jelly bean right now, so I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to talk. Do you eat bean. when? Do you get to eat it all while you're out there? On our breaks. Oh, well, I didn't even think yeah. of the breaks. Our breaks are great because we get to eat, but I seen them jelly beans looking at me in the truck when I got <laughs> in. So. Can you change? Can you change tackle or work on tackle yeah. during the breaks? The only thing you can't do is change locations. Okay. But you can do anything you need to do during the break. Work on tackle, any of that good stuff. So how did? Do you normally like coming down here to Florida? Is Florida like? A lot of people don't like fish in Florida. What do you think of it? Uh, I've learned a lot about fish in Florida. In Florida, to me. Um, areas over pattern um just getting finding your good area getting in there and staying there and fishing around were you finding spawning fish or pre-spawn what were they for you uh the water was a little off color where i was fishing so um most of them the, the two big ones i caught the first day i know was pre-spawn um today i caught a big one that looked like it's post-spawn so it was places they was coming and going i was fishing the outside edges not back in spawning places but you know outside towards the main lake is uh, where i focus most of my time what what how did the two pound uh scoreable bass change the way you fish here today or this week mm, i flipped that big jig the whole time so it may have changed it a little you know 80 percent of these major league fishing events one pound or two pound i fished exactly the same way okay this week, I might have flipped a stick worm a little more versus flipping that big jig. Um, so, yeah, maybe this week since I flipped the big jig, but most of the time, I don't change the way I fish. Yeah, well, it's still good for points for the year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make a check, you gotta be happy with yeah, that. Made the first cup, had a good week, good event at Ufala, good event here. Um, we out, we we'll make a cup, good start to the year, six more to go. That's awesome. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, you do all that stuff? All that, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. What is it? Andy Montgomery Fishing. Awesome. I appreciate the time. Thank you, man. From Florida Radio here with Jason Lambert. Tell us how your day went today, please. You know, it was, uh, it was kind of a grind for me today. I started out this morning real hot and heavy. Caught a 4.9 right off the bat. And then, wow. Um, I don't know, probably about less than 15 minutes later, I lost another one that was as good or better. And then... You know, my water got real dirty, the, water, the wind changed, come out of the south. You know, I actually practiced for a north wind, but I thought it would stay protected well enough to, to hold up, but obviously it didn't. So I started scrambling second period, ran around, ran around. Finally, third period, I found some really, really clean water. And, uh, and I just knew that week. I saw an eight that was kind of like trying to sit on the bed. I saw a couple fours swimming around. And I thought it was really going to go off in the last couple hours, but uh, you know, I caught, I don't know, probably a dozen in there in the third period. Never had a scoreable. The only scoreable I think I had was, you know, two, two and a half that come unbuttoned. But hey, look at this weather, man. I mean, back home in Tennessee, it is about to snow, it's cold. We're down here in shorts and flip flops, getting a suntan. Right. Fishing on the knockout day, so can't really complain a whole lot. Yeah. Tell us, uh, give us some of your uh, social media sites. Absolutely. Everything I've got is Jason Lambert Fishing. It's uh, Jason Lambert Fishing Facebook, Instagram. Always got something on there. Got a video guy helping me out. We're throwing stuff together constantly. So check us out, Jason Lambert Fishing. Y'all come to Florida and go fishing. Right. So the, the frustration is you see these big fish and you just can't get them hooked up, slowed down. You know, we had this bad cold front the last you know, two days ago, three days ago, and the water temps went from practice, it was like 81 degrees, and then by Sunday morning, when I got to my area, it was 59 degrees. So these fish are wanting to spawn, and in Florida in February, they, they're wanting to spawn. So right. as soon as that water started warming, those fish started coming in this afternoon. And literally, I saw 20 fish this afternoon that would have been scorable, so I had I know one of them was a seven or eight. I know there was actually one pair on a bed that was a buck and about a four pounder. But when she spoke, she, I never, she never came back. So she's obviously just getting there. But there was, you know, probably a dozen or more three pounders just cruising. So they're really coming in to, to sit down. If somebody finds that area tomorrow, they could probably have a good day. But, you know, got another front coming in on Thursday. I'm actually staying in Okeechobee until March the 3rd. So. 
That's maybe pretty... it'll get warm. Maybe maybe it'll we'll get another big wave and it'll stay warm. And... Now, can you be back out on the water tomorrow just pleasure no, actually, fishing? No, we can't. You have to yeah, stay we, off. We gotta stay off the water out of their way. So uh, I'm tired. I need a rest day anyway. Yeah, uh, I know in Orlando they're calling Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday highs only in the low 60s. Yeah, same. I think so, same here. Like two days, like 65 to 67. But I think it's gonna go down yeah. to the 30s, like two nights. In so a you row, speed so. up when it's 81 degrees. You slow down when it's 59 degrees. Very, very slow. And then, thank you so much, yes, Jason. Yes, sir. Enjoyed it. Thank y'all. Have a great time while you're here for the tell Absolutely. Come the rest to Florida and go fishing. Thank you. Here we are. I called him the stud the other day, and he lived up to the name. Jacob Wheeler, how are you? Man, I'm doing great. You know, uh, Okeechobee is definitely heating up down here. The weather's heating up, and the fishing is heating up. Them big females are starting to, to bite a little bit. I'm... Uh, Hey, I'm liking it. I had a good day. I had a really good day. You know, I think 35 pounds or something like that, you know, and, and laid off them. So, I mean, I look for tomorrow to be pretty dang legit. <laughs> you laid off of them. Yeah, yeah, laid off them today. You know, the thing was today, I, you know, we didn't didn't want to put myself in a position. You know, we go back to zero for the final day. Yeah. So, um, you know, 10 of us are going out there with the exact same, the exact same deal. We have nothing when we start the morning. And so there's no reason to to catch a few of the fish that I might need tomorrow. It might not even they might not be there, but they are definitely starting to move up. And I look for tomorrow to even be even better. So we talked. Was it yesterday? Did we yeah. talk? Mm -hmm. So you said you didn't know what you're gonna do. How did you change from last night to today? The way you're fishing. Um, you know, it was more so the area that I was fishing. The fish started to move in. You hear about like fish leaving you and fish coming to you, and that's yeah. basically what's happening. A lot of these places that these guys are fishing out in, including myself, you know, I went through an area in practice, and it wasn't. It was decent. It was really good actually. And then the cold front hit, and it was tough to get you know a good bite. And then as it started to warm back up, more fish started to move in. I didn't know how good it was going to be, you know, and it had a day in between and more fish moved in and it was really, really good. So you're not changing anything up for tomorrow. You're just going to go out and whack them. Uh, that is the plan. Catch about 50 pounds. If we catch 50 pounds, we'll be all right. Is, uh, what's the, what, were, what were you throwing today? Are we allowed to talk you know, about yeah, it? Yeah, I, I caught most of my fish between a, uh, a swim jig with a Guggen Baits band, a Bandito Bug and a Kraken Crawl, and then I caught them on a prop bait and a frog. So basically- a frog. Yeah, I did, I did. I had an eight pounder bite it and I shook it off today. So I, I don't know, hopefully that sucker's there tomorrow. Okay, now we know, we talked about it the other day. Everyone needs to go to the YouTube channel. Oh yeah, absolutely. Subscribe, be absolutely. a fan. All this stuff will be on my channel. That's it's right. We're fishing on my channel so make sure to check that one out because it'll be pretty good. It'll probably drop here in like a week to 10 days. Ah, the practice video is going to drop here real soon, but it should be good. Well, keep killing it. Congratulations. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Thank you. Let me Hi. just walk with you. What's that? Congratulations, Thank brother. You. Appreciate it. Good day. Fun day. It's fun. Well, I zeroed the first period, uh, and then the second period um, was good. Did I, you switch something up from first to second period? No, I switched something up. The elimination, man, I lost them so bad. I was using a 7.6 Abu Garcia Fantasista Heavy, which yeah. is a softer rod. It's not an actual broomstick. It's soft and it's good. But I had to go to a medium heavy because I was getting giants to the boat. Oh. And they aren't coming in the boat. Like, you've still got to fight them. And then they eventually they'd wall around. I can't get, you know, I can't do anything with them. And then the hook would tear out. So going to a lighter rod, now when, them got, when they got to the boat today, the rod would give a little let them wear out and then I could grab them. I lost one big one today. I had 21 10 with four and I don't know how big the one was. I mean, it might've been a five, but it probably was bigger. <laughs> you, you, I had 21 10 and this one just strip and drag and headed to the reason. I never turned her and she finally popped off. Are you, so, are you flipping? Or, well, I mean, what's we'll talk side? about it tomorrow. Oh, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay. I guess I got to watch the live feed tomorrow then. How yeah. excited yeah, are you yeah, to yeah, make yeah. the? This is your first. This is the first I was telling him. I said uh, I've made eight out of ten knockout rounds with the Bass Pro Tour. Yep. First championship round. How Never, insane is that? Yeah, I'm like, okay, how many of them do you have to fit? And it, what was bad <laughs> last year? I didn't even make the Red Crest. I didn't make the top 30 in points. And I made six out of eight knockout rounds because I'd get to the knockout round and finish 35th. Oh. I'd be top 10 in elimination, knockout round 35th. Leave there with like hardly any points, or you know, not near as many points as what I felt like I should have earned, you know? So it feels good to uh, to make the round here. And honestly, like, I really want to win. Like, the, uh, this, like... This format, we talk, you and I talk, well, we, we talk personally. This format fits the way you like to fish quite well. 
Yeah, this lake though, I've had it out. Every time I've been, this is my fourth time I've been here. I know. Every time I've been here, I feel like I've had a chance to win. Yeah. In the last Elite Series event we had here, I finished fourth. But I lost so many bass that it didn't happen. Finished fourth. Yeah, any one, very similar to how this week's going. Yeah. So tomorrow, the cool thing about it is all my mistakes are behind me. Yep. I've got a big fish for heavy hitters. That's out of my mind. Yes. It's land everything that I, that bites, and I think it's going to be interesting. Just you know? you're going to stick with what? Oh yeah, two rods on the deck, both at the same thing. Nice. And just go. So uh, if it happens, it happens. If not, it's still a good week, you know. But I really, really good week. I really would want to win at Okeechobee. Like this place is the one. Here in Lake Erie is like my two places that I feel like I've been close. Whether you look at the result, I got a second at Erie before, but you know. Here in Erie is like two places on my hit list. And this is number one, that's number two. Great. I'm more <laughs> excited that you're, you've are made this championship round. Thank you, thank you. So kill him tomorrow. I'm gonna try. I guess tomorrow you'll show me the winning bait. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully. You'll, oh, is it something? I just gotta land him, dude, that's gonna be the battle. Is it something that's not coming out yet? It's new, is it no, a new? No, it's oh, new. Okay. It's new. No, okay. It's, uh, pretty basic Everyone stuff. check out his Instagram, Facebook, and by the way, if you've never seen any of the YouTube channel videos, Hunter Shrogfish, you two kill it with the videos. Thank you. I love them. But good luck tomorrow and thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, bro. Michael Neal, how are you? Oh, pretty good. Tired. Uh, long day on the water, but uh, hey, I mean, I'm in Florida. It's not freezing cold in Tennessee, so uh, <laughs> it's a lot better to be here. What? Uh, you had a good, uh, good day. You're making championship round. Do you change anything from today to tomorrow? I don't think I can change anything. I mean, I fished a lot of water today, and uh, everything I caught came in one probably 100 yards square. There's just something about that area that seems to be keep reloading, and when I go try and duplicate it, I can't find another area like it. It's got eelgrass uh, mixed in with some reeds and some dollar pads. It's just a, a really unique area that's got a couple funnels that come to it, and those fish are just using that to come in and out from the main lake. And uh, I mean, like I said, I can't get a bite anywhere else but that one place. So I guess for me, it's go there, hunker down, and do or die. Are you, is it, uh, can you tell us the bait that you're using, the successful bait that you're you're catching them on? Yeah, 90% of my fish have come on a, a 3 8 ounce black and blue swim jig with a big bite baits, kamikaze crawl on the back of it, shortening it down just a little bit, but those two legs back there kicking, moving a lot of water, it just really agitates those fish coming through that vegetation. It's something you can work just effortlessly. You don't have to try and fight it through the grass. It just comes through, just slides right through. So uh, that's what I've been using, just cover a lot of water. I don't come to Florida and flip like seems like 90% of yeah. the people down here do. That's just not my game. I like to wind, I like to cover water, and uh, it's just what I'm gonna go do. So are these, the fish you're catching, are they spawned out or are they just, they're moving up? I think most of them are males that are, I think the first day it was fish that were already spawning or had done spawn and they were maybe fry garters. Yeah. But I think the fish today I caught had just moved in. I did catch one female that was a, a, the four pounder I caught and it was still full of eggs so it hadn't spawned yet so that tells me that since my second day i fished there's been a new wave of fish pulling up to spawn the males have come up there re-established the beds or made new beds and the females shouldn't be far behind so championship round tomorrow should be a knockout how does the two and the new two pound scoreable bass change the way you you, you go after fish and target target them Two pound minimum here didn't really uh, affect me any. I mean, when I used to come down here and fish FLW tour tournaments, five fish tournaments, I still did the same exact thing. I just, in Florida, I believe that the more bites you can generate throughout the day, the better your chances are of getting that big bite instead of just trying to specifically target that big bite and catch you know two or three big ones and just a couple little ones to go with it so i just go out there anytime i'm in florida and just try and generate bites so the two pound minimum uh i mean of course i've caught a lot of non-scorable fish but i think it's a great thing to have the the incentive to go for bigger fish well good luck tomorrow congratulations tell us your instagram or all that social media stuff do you have all that uh, yeah instagram's michael.neal underscore um facebook's just michael neal uh, that's pretty much all i use so check me out awesome congratulations again and good luck tomorrow appreciate it thank you dude we're here with james elam he's uh sitting in seventh place going into last day uh tell us how your day went today james it was a fun day it was a stressful day too you know with the mlf format it comes down to the wire and that cut line and I barely squeaked in. I lived to fight another day and I could go out and you know the weight's zero again, I could win tomorrow. So 
Uh, very, very exciting day for me. Uh, just uh, need to really sit down and figure out what I'm going to do for tomorrow. Okay, there's supposed to be a little bit of a weather change. I don't know if you've taken that into account yet or uh, how are you finding your fish? Are they moving into the beds? Are they? I think I'm mostly catching spawning fish, fish that I've already spawned and not so many that are moving up. Uh, you know, if it is, it's going to be a tough day on everybody and it'll be right. tough on me, but it might play into my favor, you know, if other guys don't catch them so well and I, I can get away with a little sneaky deal. Right, sounds great. Uh, you're from Tulsa, Oklahoma? Yeah. You uh, fished the classic in Tulsa? Yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your, your fishing career. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is my seventh year as a professional angler. Uh, you know, previously to Major League Fishing, uh, obviously last year when we started the Bass Pro Tour, that was my first year. This year is my second year. Uh, previous to that, I fished six years on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Uh, I fished four classics, uh, the one at Grand Lake in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I'm from. Uh, actually, we live west of town now. Uh, but that was my first classic, uh, and I won two Bassmaster Opens in the state of Oklahoma, which were really sweet because, you know, one was at Fort Gibson and one was at Grand Lake. Right. So that's always nice to win, you know, at home with all your friends and family there. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a little rundown on what I've done. Tell us some of your social media sites. How can how can the fans? Uh, yes, yeah, so, yeah. So I uh, I'm I'm really big into using Instagram. That's kind of my favorite platform. So just James Elam Fishing, real simple. And same for Facebook. You guys can find me there. Come follow me. Uh, you know, I'll uh, I'll have some good content from this week. Hey James, good luck tomorrow. Let's bring home the win. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks you so much. Yep. Thank you.